There's a rich purple. There's a bunch of them over there too. Sorry, little bee. It'd be perfect for setting up my lights tonight. It's gonna be on the cold side, but there's bound to be something. I'm definitely gonna look for a lot of mycology though. Okay, so I'm camping up in the hills for the next couple of nights. Um, should be some really good mycology. The, the nights are cool. It's going to be in the 50s. The days are in the 70s. Uh, we just had some days in the 80s. And, um, you know, lots of rain recently. So that's all going to be really good for mushrooms and fungi. Lots of mycology. Hopefully a lot of uh, millipedes. Probably some ringneck snakes and stuff. But I'm already seeing some violet webcaps, I believe they are. Definitely some purple mushrooms. They're really cool looking. And a little bit of coral. But uh, I'm going to look around. be nice if I found some entolomas. I uh, could cook them up around the campfire. Same with the maitake. This is a perfect time for my takis. They're already starting pretty good in some places. Um, Entolomas, I don't know if it's too early for them or not yet, but that would be nice. That would be some good camp cooking. Oh yeah, four years later. I remember that. Okay, so I see the root that I found, what, four, five years ago? Looks like a dragonfly. Um, kind of fun. Still looks exactly the same. I gotta figure out what these are. I'll make a spore print. These things are everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to make a spore print of this mushroom. You know, I think it might be a velvet web cap. Although I don't know why it's a web cap. So like a fool, I thought I had too many containers. Took them out of my car because uh, I thought I held a whole nother bag of them. Turns out I took that out of my car last night, so half the containers, more than half the containers. I intended to have here are not here. Yeah. Anyways, I also don't have different colors of paper with me besides yellow and stuff. I prefer to use colored cardboard for this, but nope. So I'm going to use this container. I might have to put a stick in here so I can actually remove it. That should work. Now I gotta carefully separate this cap. I don't like to use my knife. I'm gonna have to clean it thoroughly. Very purple. It's already turning rather dark. So I wonder what happens if I cut this stem or stipe. Okay, so it's kind of purple inside, pale whitish purple. See what happens to that after a couple of minutes. Here's the cap. I'll take a picture with my phone. I don't want to get up right now.
Okay, so hopefully that'll make a good spore print um, that usually aids in identifying different, you know, mushrooms and fungi. So I'll try to leave this hopefully overnight. We'll see how well that goes. place a stone on this so that you know it doesn't get disturbed too easily uh, I don't know though it might be a violet court uh, let me see what the stem is broad ape at the apex club shaped or base more dark violet surface matted fibrous with incomplete dark grayish violet rings and patches from the universal veil that does sort of look that way. Um, spore print is rusty brown. The odor is fragrant of cedar or freshly sharpened pencils. Highly scented flowers. Or highly scented flowers. Um, single scale cluster. Humus under conifers. Well, that wasn't a conifer. It was a deciduous tree that it was next to. So here is the arrowwood, okay? And uh, the reason why it's called, I doubt you can see the plant right now, but the reason this is called arrowwood, hold on. So the reason this plant's called arrowwood is because as you can tell, the stems uh, could be perfectly straight and just the right diameter for making arrows. You know, saves a lot of the time of straightening. You still have to straighten it and smooth it out a little bit, but most of the work's already done for you. So, cool plant. Corals everywhere. There's always corals here, tons of them. This is all coral. Is that some kind of russula? And those look like some kind of polypore, but I don't know because I'm going this way. Already, already something cool. I just get to the pine forest and I've already found some painted Sulis or Silas. I don't know how to pronounce it, never did. These are pretty cool. old man of the woods. I was really hoping to find some of this. Really cool. So as you can tell, that's a polypore. Great for fire making, all this good stuff. Look at all those fungi. Okay, so check this out. This is rattlesnake plantain. This stuff is super cool. There's lots of, uh, you know, ghost pipe, um, old man of the woods, mushrooms, tons of bull eats and russulas and moss just everywhere. But this is really cool. That's amazing. And here's a it's kind of fruiting body. That is really cool.
You ever want to just stick your hand in something? I mean, I'm not saying I want to do that now, but yeah. Okay, so what's cool about those gulls is there are dozens of tiny little aphids that live within them. You know, when the tree is young or, you know, early in spring or late winter when the leaf buds are forming, the adults, you know, the future generation starters, will do this thing to the leaf bud. They'll bite it and inject something that causes it to get this little mutation on it. Um, long story short, those galls are actually homes to dozens of little aphids that specialize on this. And uh, they feed on glucose that forms within it, these tiny little perfect spheres of glucose. So they'll spend often their entire life within that cone gall, um, avoiding predators and any other dangers. Their house is also their food. And if you look at the bottom, I'll show you in a second, you can see where they can come and go uh, for the ones that wish to start future generations. Um, and also I see some arrow, arrow wood or arrow leaf, whatever it's called. So boards like this are often promising. You know, sometimes you get like ringneck snakes under them. Depending on where you are, you get salamanders, maybe even like the, the northern slimy salamanders. Around here, who knows what I'll find. Might not find anything. It's kind of big too, so who knows if I can actually flip this. This actually feels like it's fastened to the ground. And that's not moving. What a waste of time. Oh, it's actually nailed down. Never mind. Okay, you see this tree here? This is called horn beam but it's also known as ironwood. And it has this very sinewy looking, you know, trunk and branches. You know, it gets bigger than this. It's related to the, you know, beech trees and stuff. The leaves are opposite veined. They're oval shaped and, you know, significantly toothed. that looks like a little hacksaw along the edge of it. But what's amazing about this tree is it's extremely dense. I mean, it's not called ironwood for no reason. Now, I remember one time years ago, I was actually harvesting a tree about this size and it took me 40 minutes to cut through the thing. I have to keep stopping to let the people through. But as I was saying, it took me 40 minutes to, to saw the tree in half. And, uh, and I still have the wood to this day, it's very dense. It's, it's incredible for making furniture if you don't want to break any saw blades or anything. And if you want like the densest wood ever, go with the ironwood. It's very heavy stuff. What's really interesting though is if it falls on the ground, it actually decays faster than the other species of trees. Um, just really neat. I love that it looks very muscly and fibrousy. You know, it looks like it's filled with tendons and muscles. And as I said, it gets bigger than this. It's related to the beech trees. It's also known as hornbeam, but I like to call it ironwood. How you doing? So yeah, you may have noticed I'm dressed totally different. It's cold, it's rainy, and also this video was getting a little bit long, wasn't it? So I'm going to actually stop the video right here as part one. And if you tune in, in just a few days, you'll see the conclusion to this trip. Till then, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, in the meantime, check out some of my other videos. Got some really good spider ones. And yeah, I'm not even going into the slime mold stuff. <laughs>